You have probably seen this view all over Instagram, but what if I told you that there was an even more incredible story behind it? I am so lucky because as a geologist, I get to see something even more than just this beautiful landscape. I'm looking at one of the most complete and studied sequences of Earth's history exposed anywhere in the world. Today, I'm going to show you why Zion isn't just about getting that perfect photo. It's all about understanding one of the most epic stories that Earth has to tell. Welcome to the rock record. Let's talk rocks. These massive cliffs tell a story that starts around 270 million years ago. A story of ancient seas, vast deserts, rivers, and the persistent power of water to shape our planet. People often ask me why I chose geology, and this right here is exactly why. These layers of rocks are like pages in a history book, and they tell the story of millions of years. What we're looking at is part of something called the Grand Staircase, a series of rock layers that stretch from Bryce Canyon through Zion to the Grand Canyon. So why is it called the Grand Staircase? So the top layer we see at the Grand Canyon is actually the bottom layer that we see at Zion. And the top layer we see at Zion is actually the bottom layer at Bryce Canyon. So it kind of creates this stair-steppy kind of feel across Arizona and Utah through the different rock layers, which is so cool. Each of these rock layers tells us about a different ancient environment. Around 270 million years ago, this area was covered by a warm, shallow sea. Then came streams, lakes, and eventually one of the largest deserts Earth has ever seen. So from looking from bottom to top, this story of Zion starts with the Kaibab Formation, created in that ancient shallow sea. You might recognize this name if you've been to the Grand Canyon, where it caps the rim. But here in Zion, it's near the bottom of our rock sequence. This is a really cool layer because fossils are found here of organisms that lived in the Permian Seas, including brachiopods, ammonites, rhizoans, crinoids, and trilobites. Within Zion, the Kaibab Formation is exposed only in a small corner of the Kolob Canyon section of the park. As sea levels rose and fell, they left behind lagoons that would eventually dry up. These evaporating lagoons gave us the Moen Kopi Formation, complete with gypsum beds, evidence of those vanishing seas. If you want to know more about this, check out our TLDR video on rock hounding at Glitter Mountain, and I talk more about how gypsum and selenite are formed. By the Triassic period, the land had risen above sea level. Rivers started flowing across the landscape, carrying sediments that would become the next chapters in our story. The climate was shifting too, becoming more like today's northern tropical regions, with wet summers and dry winters. Just above the Moen Kopi is the Chinle Formation. The layers here of brightly colored mudstone are composed largely of bentonite clay, the result of weathering of volcanic ash. The Chinle Formation is best known from the Petrified Forest National Park, where massive petrified conifer tree trunks are found in abundance, as well as a wide assortment of animals, including early dinosaurs. Going up a few levels of the rock record here and forward a few million years, we are entering the early Jurassic period, and we're seeing the formation of the rock that now makes up a majority of Zion Canyon's beautiful cliffs. Do you see these towering red and white cliffs in the background here? They were once part of an ancient desert that covered this whole region. We talked a little bit about it in the Valley of Fire video, although there it's called the Aztec sandstone and here it's called the Navajo sandstone. This desert erg covered approximately 850,000 square miles, bigger than the combined dune field of today's Sahara. Do you see these patterns in the cliff next to us? The kind of like wavy, loopy patterns here? Most people walk right past them. And you can see them on this cliff face here as well as all around. When I first learned about these, it literally blew my mind. These lines are called cross bedding and they're actually one of the major reasons that I fell in love with geology. They're basically fossilized sand dunes. You're literally walking up an ancient desert that existed 190 million years ago. And each of these lines shows us which way the prevailing winds were blowing all the way back then. Isn't that crazy? You can literally see where the wind was going because of these fossilized sand dunes. The Navajo sandstone is made up of about 98% quartz sand grains, most of which travel here from ancient coastal dunes in what's now central Nevada. The grains were rounded by their long journey, creating the smooth flowing patterns we see today. The red streaks you're seeing aren't just for show. They're telling us about the chemistry of these rocks. 
iron oxide, basically rust, creates those stunning red colors. And every time it rains, the cliffs get a fresh coat. So now we know the story of how these rock layers formed. But the story of Zion isn't just about laying down rock layers. What makes it truly stunning is Zion Canyon itself, the carving of those rock layers into the stunning landscape we see today. And that is where the Virgin River comes in. As the Colorado Plateau was gradually pushed upward, the once lazy Virgin River picked up speed. What happened next is one of the most impressive examples of erosion anywhere on Earth. Now that we've seen this incredible canyon from above, it's time to dig a little bit deeper. All right, today we are taking one of the most unique and iconic hikes I think that's probably available in a national park. We are hiking the famous Narrows. I've got my stick and my wet boots and a bunch of other gear. So let's go. Well, most visitors here keep the way through the Virgin River in between thousand foot tall cliffs. What they may not know is that they're walking through an active geologic process. There's something totally crazy. Every step we take is where solid rock used to be. This is one of the best places in the world to really understand the force of water and its role in, <laughs> in these natural formations. The Virgin River moves about one million tons of sediment annually. So here's something really cool. So there's like holes right here and then kind of past it right here. You can see these like weird holes and curves. And those are the results of flash flooding in this area. This is another way of showing how the power of water shapes really cool formations. In 1998, the flow went from 200 cubic feet per second to 4,500 cubic feet per second in just a matter of moments. That's like nine fire hydrants going full blast down this canyon. So this is a great reminder to not enter this or any other slot-like canyons or thin canyons like this if there's a chance of rain because they can go from really beautiful and serene to dangerous in just a matter of seconds. The power of water to shape rock isn't just ancient history. It's literally happening right now. The Narrows is actually an erosion-enlarged fracture where the river found a weakness in the rock and slowly wore it away. The really incredible thing is that this river has already cut through about 2,000 feet of rock, and it still has about 1,000 more feet to cut until geologists estimate that it'll run out of power to move sediment downstream. We're literally walking through an ongoing earth process. The Virgin River isn't just carving downward, it's also widening the canyon through a process called mass wasting. Springs undermining the sandstone cliffs, combined with the occasional earthquake, causes rock falls that gradually widen the canyon. All right, so this is really cool. Angel's Landing itself is what geologists call a joint controlled resistant fin. Basically, when the Virgin River was carving the canyon, it followed weaknesses in the rock. But this section here was more resistant. This incredible 1,500 foot tall fin of rock is what we are standing on today. You can actually see how the same processes created other fins throughout the canyon. It's like nature's way of showing us its blueprint. Can you imagine what this place will look like in another few million years? While Zion is famous for its views, understanding the geology helps you enjoy it even more. Every cliff tells a story of ancient environments, every canyon a story of persistent rivers, and every spring a lesson in how water moves through rock. This has been just one part of our Utah vlog. Be sure to check out the full thing if you want to see all of the fun behind the scenes happening and cool info. Also, be sure to keep an eye out for more TLDRs coming at you shortly. If you like joining us, be sure to like, subscribe, and follow along for more geotourism adventures. And let me know, now that we're able to film in national parks without having to get a permit, which national park do you want to know the geology of next?